Brainchip has officially launched its second generation Akita technology platform. Let's talk about what it all actually means. Brainchip's first Akita technology of course catapulted them to being the world's first commercial producer of neuromorphic AI IP. As we understand it, neuromorphic technology helps to enable ultra low power, energy efficient, intelligent edge devices in the artificial intelligence of things space. Of course, it's been interesting watching the brain chip journey evolve as they now focus on commercialization and we're starting to see how they're going to be rolling this pathway out moving forward. They've now split it out, so their first generation is under Akita 1.0 and this new generation is the second generation or Akita 2.0 and under Akita 1.0 they have the reference chips Akita 1000 and of course a recently released Akita 1500 and it can be anticipated that it's likely we'll see an Akita 2000 reference chip coming under this second generation Akita technology. Before we talk about why this second generation Akita technology was necessary, of course let's think about some of the benefits that it actually provides. So as we can see it's added 8-bit processing which of course is significant depending on the complexity of the problems that we're looking to solve in the space. Along with that they've added temporal event based neural nets with the acronym TEN and of course there's the vision transformer acceleration which was hotly anticipated by investors and often discussed. In the announcement, we can see here that Brainchip has highlighted that the capabilities that have been added in this second generation are critically necessary in a number of key industries, including industrial, automotive, smart home and smart city. It's going to be fascinating to see if potentially these are indications about sectors or industries that Brainchip will be targeting as initial areas to try and get their Akita technology inside some upcoming products for. And so as we talk about the why and how this all fits within the context of the broader BRN story, we are now on Instagram. We're providing daily stock market news over there. The pinned comments got the link, so head over. Make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on, hit the like button, and I'd love to know your thoughts, so drop in a comment below as well. And so of course, that leaves us with a question of why. Why has Brainchip looked to bring out the second generation of the Akita technology? The first Akita generation is currently out. There's two commercial licensing agreements in place, one with Renesis and one with Megachips. And investors, of course, are currently waiting to see meaningful revenues flowing through from these. As we know, to understand it, in the semiconductor space, how it actually works is initially you get a licensing fee or a licensing agreement, which is a lumpy payment initially for the rights to utilize the technology. And then, of course, as that technology is utilized and implemented, there is some smaller, more incidental fees with engineering and supporting fees. But over time, the more significant revenue streams come through later on. There's long lead times to get there, but once the technology is implemented into products that are then sold moving forward, you can see royalties flowing through into perpetuity, essentially, as more products are sold containing your technology, or in this case, of course, Brainchip Cicada IP. So there are long lead times. It looks like potentially the first products containing Akita could be out in 2023. And of course, they're moving forward. Investors will be watching to see that revenue coming through. But it leads us to the second generation of the Akita. And I think what was fascinating was there's a few interesting insights that we can take away from the recent announcement that discuss this. And so having a look here, Sean Hare, the CEO of Brainchip, was quoted on the recent release as saying, the development of the second generation of Akita was strongly influenced by our customers' feedback and driven by our extensive market engagement. As they stated, the new generation of Akita allows designers and developers to incorporate features that weren't possible before. And so the takeaway from that is it looks like there's a lot of customer engagement and discussions going on behind closed doors. Of course, these prospective customers' discussions can play out in a range of different dimensions, whether it's through licensees, whether it's through prospective customers themselves, perhaps early access partners, or through ecosystem partners too. Of course, it's still early stages, it's going to be fascinating, but it looks like there's enough prospective customers and potential use cases as well that's really informed the need to develop and roll out the Akita 2.0. So it'll be fascinating to see how things play out on the commercial front from here moving forward on the back of it all. Of course, the Akita second generation announcement was a significant one. It was the first price sensitive announcement for BRN in a long while and I know a lot of investors were looking forward to that. But I think there was some more significance when thinking about it in context of the broader BRN story. So as we know, of course, Brainchip is a company playing in a space that's commercially sensitive. So a lot of the discussions are bound by NDAs and a lot of investors understand that. And BRN's essentially been playing in more of a stealth mode type operation as they look to commercially roll it out. And there's a lot of discussions going on behind closed doors. But it was a very strongly worded announcement. I think there was also some fascinating insight as we saw some of the wording transitioning from the earlier stages previously surrounding a lot of partners discussion. But now we saw much more pointed words surrounding customers as well, which of course, there is a distinction between between. And then also understanding that the website was released in and around the same time too. And it looks like Brainchip is making much more of a concerted effort now. So it'll be fascinating to see how the communications play out moving forward.
On the new website, one of the parts that stood out to me was some of the reflections from partners within the Brainship ecosystem. Of course, many of these are big players within the semiconductor space. So it's fascinating to see the reflections and also, I guess, some of the potential integrations or how the Akita technology could be implemented and integrated moving forward with these players. So investors will now be wondering, is this the start of the next chapter? Is stealth mode over? How are things going to be playing out on the communications front? With, of course, the understanding that it's still a commercially sensitive space. Of course, there's no answers to that yet. We'll have to wait to see how it evolves. But I do think there are a number of key considerations and factors to think about moving forward in the brain chip story. First and foremost, of course, is investors and the broader market is awaiting and watching for revenue. Brainchip have commercialized and developed their Akita technology. The focus is on commercialization, but investors are going to be looking towards the financial statements over the upcoming period to see how those revenues start rolling through, particularly as word starts to come through if those first products do come to market to get an understanding about how those revenue streams will look. But of course, also on the licensing front, as we talked about revenues coming through on the royalties front from products, but more commercial and licensing agreements is what investors will be looking for too. As we understand it, we've talked about it before on the channel, product adoption takes time, particularly in a new space like neuromorphic computing. It's gonna take time, it's not gonna be an instantaneous thing, but it has been fascinating because we've seen digitization picking up pace. We've seen the broader discussion around society, around artificial intelligence and the importance of this continuing to grow. You only have to think about something like ChatGPT and how it's really raised the collective awareness of the AI space. So it'd be fascinating to see how these broader discussions at corporate level play out too. The artificial intelligence of things solutions and services market is forecast to be worth over $1 trillion US by 2030. This is according to an industry report published by Fortune Business Insights. Brainship is of course looking to take some part and hopefully to be a leader in this emerging space. It was fascinating to again read about some of the wording from Sean Hare, the CEO, in the latest report where he stated that with this launch of the second generation Akita, we have significantly extended our competitive advantage in neuromorphic AI. The technology truly is incredible. I think for those who've got an engineering background or a technology background, they'll understand just how significant this is on the technological advancement front. But of course, now it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out on a commercial front as well. And so now Brainship's focus will be on getting their Akita technology into as many products as possible over the next decade and beyond and getting the score on the scoreboard that investors are really looking forward to. Of course, it's not going to be a straight linear line. There are, of course, inherent commercialization risks, but it is clear from the recent announcement that Brainship know what their focus is moving forward. As we can see here, the statement was, we have recently expanded our sales organization to become truly global, and we are focused on executing more IP license agreements and generating revenue growth over the coming years. I think what was most interesting and telling for me personally and really provided a fascinating insight with everything that's gone on over the past few days in the Brainchip story was an article that was featured in Forbes. It was discussing Brainchip and their second generation Akita technology. And it stated this, if Brainchip's Akita event-based platform succeeds, it won't be the first time that a radical new silicon technology has swept the field. Consider DRAMs, microprocessors, microcontrollers, and FPGAs, for example. When those devices first appeared, there were many who expressed doubts. No longer. It's possible that Brainchip has developed yet another breakthrough that could rank with those previous innovations. Time will tell. It's going to be a fascinating journey to watch evolve, particularly as the artificial intelligence era starts to pick up pace. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. We're now on Instagram. Come over for your daily stock market news. A big thank you for joining us. Here's another video you can check out after this one. For now, stay well and happy investing.